Hey there, welcome to this channel. I am Mandy and I'm going to be sharing different things about recovery, rest, self-care, how you can take care of yourself better, and just talk through life. So I am a young married woman and looking forward to having children. So I'm just going to share where I'm at this season, what I'm learning, and hopefully that can impact you and help you on your journey to taking care of yourself better and healing from whatever ails you. <laughs> ails. Um, so yeah, buckle in. This is going to be a fun episode. I am going to be sharing my life with you and uh, just this journey that I have been on to stepping out of being a victim and stepping out of a place where I felt really stuck. And so if you're in a season where you're feeling extra stuck lately and just not like you're actually living life and feeling alive and just kind of feeling like you don't have a lot of friends and maybe you're lonely or maybe you're just super anxious and spiraling even though you have really good support, I am going to share what has helped me and just where I'm at today. So I guess I could talk about why I am getting into this. Something that really at the beginning got me to where I like knew I had to do this was when I had a night where I just really wanted to drink. And that's usually a sign um, if it's not out of a different motive for me. Um, I can just tell that I something's going on, something going on deeper in me that I need to work through. And so um, that night that um, I wrote even these thoughts out, it started out with, right now I want to go to drinking. And I want something that, I guess in that moment, I wanted something that would either numb the chaos of my life or give me life for where I feel bored. Sometimes I just get bored and want to just drink. Probably pretty common, but um, I'm just trying to work on that. Because honestly, I want to drink. I want to numb and get this out of my brain and move on to the next season where I get something else. And I just realized that I wanted something to numb this chaos in my life. And just that uncomfortability. I just want to be comfortable as a nine- on the Enneagram, I just find that I'm so often avoiding things. I'm avoiding conflict that other people bring on, and I'm avoiding the conflict that I have going on inside of me. And um, I am doing my work, but <laughs> it's going to always be a battle for me. And I think the battle gets easier in different seasons, and then sometimes it ramps up. And the reason I wanted to do this was because I needed something other than the drink. I really wanted to escape my, even just like boredom, uh, and my lack of doing something. My lack of feeling alive and taking control of my life and not playing the victim, like that feels good. But I've been finding myself in this season just throwing pity parties all the time. Which pity parties, you know, you can take a little one here and there. I've heard uh, different coaches describe that. And, it, and sometimes it's needed just to sit in your pity for a moment. But I found that the narrative I have in my head is that this stinks and I'm stuck and I can't do anything until I get months ahead, years ahead to this new place that I want to get that I think is going to somehow solve that issue. A while back, um, I had a ministry ask a few questions through a survey. So I was answering them. One of the answers I gave, uh, I think it was like, the question was something about your expectations and of marriage. They were working on like a marriage ministry program, a marriage ministry program. And I... <laughs> wrote that one of the expectations I had when getting married is that it would fix my loneliness problem. Obviously, right? You marry someone, you get to be with them all the time. Loneliness goes away, right? I'm not single, I'm not alone. But unfortunately, the loneliness problem is attached to something else, and I still am working through that. 
and I think it has more to do with friendships than a marriage. And my marriage is awesome. It is a lot of hard, intentional, slowing down, having the slow conversations, actually talking about my emotions, which I hate, but we do it. And so I consider my marriage to absolutely be a blessing and a huge support and comfort, but it doesn't fix my loneliness problem. And those are the words I have to describe it right now. I want to do this to be able to talk to more women and to connect with more women that also just feel a wrestling, a weird, that's like a christian term for um, what I'm trying to say, a wrestling. But you just feel the something's got to give or I'm going to give back into these other things that don't actually help. That's the problem with uh, my recovery is that I've learned if I have that thing that I feel like will just fix it, I now know it doesn't, which in a lot of ways kind of stinks, um, but ultimately long term, it's a blessing. I feel like there is so much darkness that my friends and I are working through. And this happens when we just get isolated and alone and we feel stuck and we don't talk to someone about that that can help guide us and carry us as we're dealing with that. We just don't see a way out. So I've got different friends that have been talking about how they feel stuck in a job. They feel maybe even stuck in a relationship because at least it gives them something. Like the job at least gives them the finances. They can, And I feel stuck in this season before having kids. I think I've just taken this victim hood on and this pity of, oh, this is so hard, I have to wait. I've got the narrative that um, if only my husband said yes, then I could have this thing and I wouldn't have to be dealing with another season where I just have to wait. I just have to be patient. Like, I'm so tired of having those seasons and yet I'm learning something else through this waiting season and I'm learning to rewrite what I am feeling through really hard conversations with wise people that are going, you know what, everyone at some point has to deal with this in one way or another and you get to choose what happens in that season. It doesn't just have to be sit back, can't do anything. There is something about like letting go of control and surrendering to it, but it doesn't mean you have to just sit. There's always something that you can do. And sometimes for, you know, the crazy go, 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 go people, it is stopping and resting. And that is what COVID did for us. For a lot of us is like, shoot, I've been going, going, going. And now I can't keep going. What am I going to do? But also during COVID, we didn't just have to sit. You know, there were people figuring out puzzling and uh, games and my husband and I went outside and we played volleyball together and there's ways to figure out what you can do that's productive, that helps your brain, that helps your physical body and you can learn to take care of yourself better in these kinds of seasons and I think that's what I am figuring out. So really, I think the reason I want to do this and I know something that is hard but is worth it, is doing it for myself. It's going to be selfish, but I also am doing this for you and for anyone who you pass this video along to who may also just have these thoughts going on in their brain. And I want to help you get out of that hold, out of that stuckness that this is how this season has to look because it doesn't. And this isn't, so it's not because I know what you should do. I'm telling you, I don't know. But I'm going to share what other people know who are objective about what I'm dealing with. It's not because I know or because they know some secret or perfect advice. It's because I'm not in your pain. I don't have to have the perfect idea to be able to help and someone else doesn't have to give me the perfect plan and that's really been helpful because sometimes I take people's advice as if it is the answer 
and then I get kind of mad. You know, I did the thing you said it would, would help, and it didn't help. So taking the pressure off myself, taking the pressure off someone giving me advice, and just trying things. Asking for help, getting ideas, knowing they're never perfect. This is the journey. We're on the journey adventuring through life. Lovely, right? When you're lonely, when you're in pain, when you're stuck. Because you do just want to get out of it. Any way to get out of it. Even if that is drinking or smoking or going to some other habit. Mine is chocolate and ice cream, which often does help. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but it really, I love ice cream and chocolate. That's a problem. Okay, moving on. Really good advice, Mandy. I know. Ooh, okay. Something else that I wrote in my notebook. So since I'm not in your pain, I'm not in your quicksand. I'm not in that quicksand quick sand and I'm not, okay I'm not in your pain I am in the quick sand but I know that numbing won't do a thing so something that is so great about having someone who you're doing life with is that they can realize when you are in the quick sand and when you are starting to just run in circles or run in the same place or just the more you're struggling, the more you're getting stuck. To have somebody go, I see what's happening there. I see that you're not normally like this. Like, what's going on? Having someone that reminded me that I'm in quicksand, that really helped me realize that I was submitting to the pain. I was submitting to something that definitely does not deserve as much authority as it got, as much control as it got over me. And just naming that and having someone else call that out sometimes is revolutionary. I don't know if that's the word. I'm going to use all crazy words, but you get the idea. It is like a huge burden lifted off when you name something. It may not feel like it because sometimes all we want is that fix. But just know that is a huge step and give yourself credit when you realize I'm doing that thing again. My anxiety, that's what's happening in my mind right now. I'm spiraling out of control. Whew, I got this. That was happening. I'm going to use my tools now. And if you don't have tools yet, you need to get in a program that's going to give you tools. You need to watch YouTube videos that are going to teach you how to journal, how to write down your gratitude, how to cope. How to breathe, how to grow in seasons that are crushing your soul. You need tools. Oh, I even wrote down revolution before I knew I was going to say it. So, realizing that you're being submissive to something, that can start a revolution. Let's do it together. Watch this journey figure out where you're at if you relate to anything, and then let's do something new. Let's do something to feel alive and to work on ourselves and to actually get a step forward. We're not talking about getting all figured out, getting the giant fix, but we're talking about taking a next step that is going to get us further in the journey because in that stuck spot, we're going to keep feeling crappy. We're going to spiral. We're going to get stuck in that quicksand. It's going to drag us down as we struggle and struggle and struggle. But if we just breathe, have someone else that can step alongside us and name different things that maybe we're not seeing and help us see different patterns and help us think differently to rework our brain so we don't take a step back into that puddle, into that sinking feeling. So that is what I have for you today, and we'll just see how this process goes, but I definitely am going to need feedback. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a crazy day struggling through different thoughts that came up, and uh, I hope you take just a moment to be kind and to wrap yourself in a hug and just be kind to yourself. Be warm to yourself, because... You matter. All right. Bye, guys.